All right, electrophrase machine. Um, I just got here. They said the right unit's always soft. We've got a cab temp alarm though, which is weird. And it says it's 60, which maybe. <sighs> Let us get into the air log and see what we can see. Cabinet, cabinet, cabinet. Cabinet, 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 cabinet. So they think it's the barrel, but it's not, it's the cabinet. And why is the cabinet only shutting down the right? So there's a right cylinder refrigeration on the floor. Hmm. All right, so no evidence this compressor has been running, but if it's been off all night, hey, we have a cyclist, so that's sweet. Well, let's reset everything. We have water cooled units. So, yeah, their complaint is the right barrel, but they may not realize it's from the cabinet, or they may be two totally separate issues. I'm just giving a visual to try and look at what's been done where. There's no service cap. has been replaced in 22. This one I can't see the tag on yet. All right, well, so I'm feeding mix. The mix bag is not warm, it's very cold. So I think when they got here and they put mix in the unit, they're not leaving it in overnight. So I'm priming the unit because I can't put it in a freeze without So, when we put the right side in freeze, the cabinet should also come on. Beware of moving belts. No evidence of a sight glass problem on that. We do have a fan running. We do have a gargling cabinet. So this may not be a barrel problem at all, this may just be a cabinet problem. shut down. I'm guessing because it's satisfied at zero. Now she's heading back up to 17 in a hurry at 17 ish. Yep. She kicks in and pulls back down. It's going to take a second for the refrigeration system to catch up and it will. And she'll pull back down. Interesting. So I don't see a problem with the refrigeration system. We're gonna have gauges on it, but charge is right. And so she's finally caught up, so she's starting to pull down. And once that system catches its groove, it should pull down in a hurry. The cabinet's also pulling down, but I'm guessing the, I touched the belt, so I'm gross. I'm guessing you're gonna see that because of the side glass, because of the bubbles. Oh, so she only shut off at five. Why do we have it shutting off at five? It's supposed to go all the way down at least to zero, but the factory is too below. So that'll hurt recovery product a little bit. I wasn't running video, but I'm pretty sure this compressor just started buzzing and dropped out. Could be wrong. Something started buzzing and nothing else was running.
looks like it's still running based on the suction line. Um, I sprayed, right? Sprayed bubbles. This is right terrible always. This rusts and then rots, and you can see it. Um, I sprayed on the caps before I take them off, just to make sure we don't have right easy simple stuff. So now I'm going to bring the sniffer in. See if we can't find why we're short. There goes the buzzing again. Sounded like it came from like the other side of this wall, like the cabinet. Oil. This is oil. Definitely. But is that just oil from somebody putting gauges on it? Puffing a little bit. Oh no, look. Peter's running. Compressor's not. Gotcha. Sorry, I'm a little behind. So, that beater's running, this compressor should be running. And it's not. So, let us see. Yeah, so our right side's at 27 degrees. At 17, it was supposed to kick in. So the compressor cannot run. This isn't a factory weld, so it's like somebody's replaced the compressor already? Question mark. It's a three-phase unit, so it's not going to have start components, right? Maybe, just maybe, we have some sort of electrical problem or we're dropping a leg for a safety or something stupid like that. Get the clamp on it. And there she is, trying to start. <coughs> All right. So, I've got the units off. Ooh, look at that, buddy. A little burny burn. Uh, I don't remember what's what by immediate. Uh, and I normally would bump them to find out, but here. Let's see, does this... Yeah, buddy. The greatest of all wiring diagrams. Printed on an index card. Motor. Motor, motor, motor. So, compressor, and it ran. Check the coil wires, seem tight. So the compressor, when I ask it to run, runs. When I ask it to run here, Ooh, well she ran that time. So I need to check coil voltage. I need to check, because I didn't hear that contact for pulling in. Let's run it a couple times. Oh, yeah. going on here the amp clamp wasn't indicating anything happening all right going 12 and a quarter amps on the compressor while she's running that whip has a burn mark on it I don't like that 
like that at all. Seven point four RLA. So we should be pulling seven and a half amps. And I'm not supposed to know this, I'm wrong. Yeah, we're pulling 12 amps. So maybe that's why she can run for a little bit. And then she clocks out. Cause she's clocking. Oh yeah, buddy. That head is on fire. So I just tested voltage in and out of that unit and it's fine, it's 206. But when I, it, she just kicked out, so when it kicks back on in a second. When I touch this, I swear I hear it buzzing. Like I hear the contactor buzz. So, wonder if we're getting, I know we're getting good three phase out, 206. Let's wait for it to fire back up again. We'll put the thermal on it. Watch how hot it's getting. Uh, and then the only last thing will be to pull. I'm gonna put gauges on, make sure it's not, you know, why would it be overcharged? But you never know, maybe it's horrifically overcharged, which it's not. Uh, and then pull that lead off, fire it up, and check voltage coming to the actual compressor. Not from here, right? I mean, we've got wires from here to there, so what if something happens between where we're at and where we're going? And get ready at 17. She kicks on. Bang. Yeah, look at how burnt the inside that contact is. I don't know that. Alright. Ooh. Hey, there you go. Hang on. Uh, when I was doing this with two hands, it was good. Yeah. It's showing one. Yes, it's like, actually straight. I'm missing a leg of power through. Sometimes. 220. So it's on. Uh, now we got it. One to two. One to two input power, 205. One to two outbound power. Oh my gosh, my left hand. One fourteen. Contactor is not letting one of those legs of power through. So I've got both systems cycling now, and you can definitely see with the left unit, we're not there yet, and the right unit's ugly. So now I've got 183 from one to two. Contact them. Also, side note, this cabinet hasn't pulled down below 41 because of the side glass. Um, I gotta get all this stuff off the top because I have to slide this top back to change that contactor well. Um, yes, I keep the contactor because, yeah, baby. Gotta have it. So, if I had a suspicion that there was just one leg of this no good, for instance, I know one's not, I know one is the one not passing properly, I could actually move it to four. I could take one, move it to four, take one, move it to four, but this whole thing is burnt up, and to be honest, they all are. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and change this one completely right now. And obviously we're gonna unplug the unit is this I'll take up the bottom wires these just push down and then flip up so the bottom wires off right and they're black black red blue I'm gonna attach those to my new one I'm gonna hook my new one and then I'm gonna go wire for wire rebuilding so this tab pulls out and this gets out of your way to make it a lot more convenient also note to self you have to put this it, this comes out last and in first because you can't tighten that with this in the play. So, put that back down there. We're gonna lock this back in. Slides in there like so. There you go. 
All right, we're going to plug it back in. Also, watch um, coil voltages, right? So this is all, there are all 24 volts. But be careful when you order these because a lot of them are 240 volt coils and they look identical. Right. As our friend would say, three, two, one, don't blow up. Oh, that's the right barrel. False alarm, three, two, one, don't blow up. Hey, she pulled it right in. Now let's check our voltage. So volts first, and then we'll go to the compressor. Ugh, come on. I can't get to it because that's stupid. All right, now I have 205 across. Hit temp already? This thing is getting down, man. Oh, it did. So it's jumping back up quick, though. So let's clamp on. We're getting close. If she kicks on, maybe we're not pulling 11 amps anymore if we provided the proper power. Yeah, baby. Now, it doesn't mean the compressor hasn't been damaged, and it's important to express that to the operator, right? This is why I have a program where I change contactors before this happens. Um, but, now she's running, and she will continue to run. So props to who worked on this before. This is somebody who knows electrofreeze, because maybe, it's because they had to replace it, but this rubs on that, and then it makes funny. You don't get good, uh, you don't get good interaction with the buttons. So I do the same thing. I wrap that with electrical tape. So sweet, good job. Mike. That just made an unpleasant sound at startup. Oh, that was the left side. Hear that? The ice cream looks all pocky because there wasn't a duck bill in there. So there's a little rubber duck bill that faces up so that when the pump stops, it keeps that from running back down. Otherwise, every time the pump stops, the, the, the mix flows back into the bag and then the first gulp it gets is all air. And then you end up with really airy hockey ice cream so i think this stuff is super important to note right to make sure that everybody's on the same page this compressor stand by i mean this compressor is pulling 7.4 amps when it runs okay which is literally cylinder press 7.4 it's exactly the amps right so it shouldn't be pulling 7.4 it should be pulling 6.8 and leaving me 10 percent or 8 percent uh, but damage done from uh, single phasing a three-phase compressor for so long if you do that that was the other side but you're having the same problem over here. And that was my last contactor, by the way. So. It almost sounded like a beater motor, though. Ooh, look at this. Melty smell. This other one, which is crazy. It's a 2022 compressor.
it'll settle down. Yep, so you're over amping there too. Bad contactors are gonna destroy $800 beater motors, right? And $2,000 compressors over a $100 contactor. That's actually an expensive contactor. It's more like 200 bucks, but. those out. That one actually burnt completely off. My compressor's gonna go, man. I can put a regular 24 volt contactor in there, but no. Um, I tell them to shut that barrel down or they're gonna burn off the contactor, the compressor. Yeah, look, it's just shot, completely shot, not making contact anymore. And these are all three-phase motors. So, I said, you single-phase that motor for any amount of time, it's done. I'm all over the place. But I want to put it in clean and just turn the beater on. slack those belts are. So the reason I wanted to cycle this beater on and off was to see, was it the beater motor I was hearing starting or the compressor? It is the compressor. All right, and before we go messing with the charge of this cabinet, I wanted to verify that it is not uh, iced up, which it is not, because it was off when I got here and I started it up, and that the fan works, which it does. So. Let's weigh in a new charge. I sniffed and didn't find a leak. Um, so, even in here. So, let's weigh in a new charge. All right, I'm pulling a charge, or I'm pulling a vacuum on the unit real quick. Cabinet compressor, cylinder refrigerant. Cabinet compressor, eight ounces, 130 volts. I was also curious to see from the mic on stuff how well it cools down. So we crack this, get liquid to the edge, and we tear out our scale. Now we're going eight ounces. I had this issue the other day when I changed the compressor that the factory charge didn't clear the side glass. So, I was curious about that. on the head pressure. Yeah, buddy, I like that better. The sight glass is flashing for the moment, but <laughs> it's not funny, but 175, it's really where I want to park it. I don't want that head pressure to go much higher. Oil looks clean from this side, but the electro freeze is funny. We're moving a lot of heat right now. The fan blows out, so you gotta look at the coil from the inside to see if it's dirty. Just the dumbest design ever. Yeah, we're running 200 head. Suction's good. So you want about 30, between 25 and 35 PSI on a 134 cabinet with a TXV. This is a TXV. So definitely gonna pop the other side panel. I think I'm gonna close this up, pop the other side panel, and uh, 
see if there's not crap all over the inside of that coil. I had a whole rocket launcher on the side I had to take out. Um, you're just off, right? Look at the pressure switch. Dude, it's not even insulated to the barrel. So also, get ready to have to change your pressure switch because all that moisture gets in that groove. Boy, all right. Down here. pressures yet. So I'm going to let this run and dry out the oil. And now I'm going to be curious if I can add a little bit above the factory charge for that cycle. I keep my pressures under control. Let's look. I'm going to suggest that they just shut this compressor down and not use it, empty it, flush it, leave it completely off. Um, it's just not worth it. Just don't run really the Don't risk the compressor. And I'll see how fast I can get some more of those. 